Hey folks, BFG Neil here. Um, today I'm going to show you how to use helium status. Uh, it's a tool I've wrote to live diagnose hotspots on the helium network. Um, there's some couple of quirks to it, so I just wanted to show everyone how to use it and how to get the best information from it. So when you first go to helium status, you'll be asked to log in. You can use a Google account or you can just create a username and password. Um, you won't be charged at this stage. It's free to use and that will always stay free. We just wanted to lock it down just in case we had any abuse. Um, so the first thing you do is go to go to go to the stats check and, and search up a hotspot you want. So in this case, we're going to look up everyone with a name call. Um, and, and straight away, you see the API information. Now, the problem is with Helium is that API information is gossiped. And this can also often be stale. Um, so what we want to do is a live status check. A live status check on the Helium network um, just asks a miner in the cloud that doesn't earn to talk to your miner and ask for what's called a book. A book is all the information that's listed um, when, when a miner connects to yours to be able to connect to it to use the peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, there's a few fields on here that do come from the API still. You'll see we pull the API status, the API reported height, and the, the last challenge. Um, but mostly the information is live. So things like this observe listen address, peer count, last peer connection count, um, and the relay status is all, all live information. Now on Explorer and the app, this can be really delayed and it can often be delayed by days. So it's really important that you're able to check the status of your hotspot. Now, the first thing I can see here is, is that this hotspot's listing is functioning correctly. There's a number of tests that this system does. And um, if there are any warnings, you'll, the first sign you'll see is something here. So for example, on this one, the, the hotspot is offline. So it can't connect, it can't look up any information, so it's listing it as offline. Um, for example, on this one, um, this hotspot is relayed. So you can see here that the observed listen address is a peer-to-peer -peer relay address. It's not listed as IPv4, for example, on this one. So that's a sign that it's relayed. Um, there is a rare case that I've seen where sometimes you have a double listen address. Now this is usually something to do with the boot up sequence of the hotspot. So if you can reboot the hotspot, this double listen address should go away. But the problem is, is that because the IP is first and then it has a relayed address, the NAT thinks it's symmetric, but it's not because the IP is first. So rather than listing something like here where it says NAT type none, or here NAT type static, it's actually listing as NAT type symmetric, which is Sorry, wrong one. NAT type symmetric, which is not true. So in this case, I'd reboot that. The, the, other, um, the other one that's really important to look at is, is if your observed listen address matches the API reported listen address. Now, if it doesn't, as you can see here, this would indicate that this hotspot might not be able to beacon. So they'll try to um, report it to this IP address, but it's actually living on this one. So the beacon won't get through. Now, because of the way the API works with gossiped information, this address can take a while to update. Um, and whilst you're waiting for it to update, it, you just you, you just can't beacon because it doesn't know how to get you. This has got faster in recent times, but it's still an issue. So this could witness fine, but it might not beacon. So if, if it hasn't beaconed in a while, it's because the API address is different. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then, then there's a couple more tools that are available on here. The first one is that you can ping your hotspot. So if I click this listen address here, you'll see we do what's called a ping test. And what you're looking for here is not only that it's green, but that all of the, the latency times are very similar. If you have big spikes in your latency, that can mean that your hotspot is um, coming offline and online, has a very unstable connection and can cause some issues. So it's important that you check for that. And then finally, if for some reason this information doesn't look right, what you can do is a connection test. Now a connection test will pre-fill with your IP address. You can also find it up here under Force Connect. I always prefer to go to the Force Connect because it pre-fills it from your um, detected IP address of the internet connection you're on. If you click it from the hotspot live check page, um, it will use the information that's set against the um, hotspot. So 
this this allows you to do a direct connect now this updates and says connected successfully but when you go back to the report this information doesn't update to that that's normally a sign that your hotspot needs rebooting so you'll need to power off the hotspot power it on again wait 10 minutes for the software to boot up and then try a connection tester um, and then yeah there's some couple more uh, wallet lookup so you can look up any wallet and um, live live check any of the, the the hotspots in the wallet for example this is a huge wallet so there's quite a few to look through but yeah you can click any one and see what the status is it takes a few seconds sometimes when it's offline because we do a series of tests it takes a while for these tests to come back for example we test for ping so you can see that here we test for ping that your hotspot's pingable right now this hotspot isn't pingable but if we just told you the first ping was unavailable that could have just been a momentary blip so we try it a few times so normally if it's slow loading it, it's a sign that the hotspot's offline um, and very very weirdly one thing i've never worked out is that you can ping relayed addresses so if the relayed addresses do work they will ping so this one you can see is on a new new address There you go. So yeah, that's just one more thing to, to realize that I didn't say that sometimes you need to refresh this report because it tries to dial you, dials you, it gets stale information and then when that connection's made, it can refresh. So sometimes you just need to give them a, a refresh to update the status. And the last thing is that we do allow monitoring of hotspots. So whilst it takes an hour or two sometimes for for um, Explorer or the app to update you, or days in some cases, we can we allow monitoring on a, on an hourly basis. So we've got some packages. You don't have to sign up for this, but if you if you want to, you can. Um, and there's packages for for most size installers and bigger if you need it to get in touch. Um, it costs a couple of quid a month. You know, five dollars a month for two hotspots monitoring, or you know, if you want ten, then it's only twenty dollars. And this will just give you instant alerts. And there's some new features coming up in the future. One is that we're going to be tracking activity gap. And that activity gap will then have webhooks. A webhook could say, for example, if this hotspot hasn't earned in six hours, give it a reboot. And then with, a, with the power of a Wi-Fi plug, you could reboot your hotspot if the activity gap's big enough. Or, for example, if it fails ping, you could automatically do it. Um, yeah, and that's everything. I think I covered everything in the tool. Uh, there's so many videos on this, I just wanted to go over and show you. So if, if you like Helium status, feel free to add monitor into your hotspots. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a like and a subscribe for the channel. It helps me, helps me spread the information. And uh, thanks.